He was the revolutionary leader who put Cuba on the world stage and made himself a world player, the communist adversary for 10 U.S. presidents. For nearly five decades, he wore the trademark beard and army fatigues, giving his fiery speeches against what he called the evils of imperialism. The last battle will be fought in the capital. You can be sure. In the 1950s, Castro led the overthrow of Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista. After victory in 1959, he appeared on Edward R. Murrow's Person to Person, Fidel, a rebel in pajamas. Tell me, Fidel Castro, are you concerned at all about the communist influence in Cuba? Oh, I am not worried because really there is not threat about communism here in Cuba. Castro executed former Batista officials and began to nationalize American-owned property. The U.S. broke off relations and imposed a trade embargo. In 1961, President Kennedy authorized a force of CIA-trained Cuban exiles to try to overthrow Castro. The invaders were crushed as they waded ashore at the Bay of Pigs. Castro embraced communism and moved closer to the Soviet Union. Is the CBS News Extra. In 1962, the U.S. found evidence of Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba. I have directed the armed forces to prepare for any eventuality. The nuclear clock ticked down and then stopped. The Soviets agreed to remove the missiles. In exchange, the U.S. promised not to invade Cuba. Castro's Cuba is a land of contradictions. It has free medical care and its literacy rate is among the world's highest. But political opposition is suppressed and the economy is a disaster. Those antique cars on shabby roads became as much a symbol of Cuban life as cigars or music. Twice, Castro unleashed a mass exodus of Cuban refugees onto U.S. shores. And with the decline of the Soviet Union and its support, Cuba faced economic ruin in the 1990s, forcing Castro to encourage tourism and foreign investment. In 1998, Castro invited Pope John Paul II to visit Cuba and reinstated Christmas as an official holiday. Castro once told CBS News how he wanted to be remembered. That uh, he was a socialist. That Castro wanted a more egalitarian society, a society as many other men has dreamed of in the past. Cristo entre ellos. Jesus among them. In July 2006, Castro had intestinal surgery and announced a temporary transfer of power to his brother Raul. The transition became permanent as Castro's health declined and the fiery revolutionary faded from public view. Today, the last historic political figure of the Cold War is gone. O muerte. Socialism or death, Fidel Castro loved to hate America and every political turn. Hasta la victoria siempre. Eliancito, la patria te espera. His own political stock, albeit small, soared during the international custody fight for Elian Gonzalez. Bingo, bingo, bingo. When the U.S. returned his little prince, Castro called the moment a moral victory over imperialist America. The man, born Fidel Alejandro Castro Ruz in Biran, Cuba, came to power leading a ragtag band of bearded rebels to overthrow a dictator. He ended up becoming one himself. Castro stood defiantly against 10 U.S. presidents. Around the world, leftists who hated America's influence and power called Castro a hero. The right but for the U.S., he was the all-too-close face of the bitter Cold War. And while the world could never completely dismiss Castro politically, over time, to some critics, he seemed more like a caricature, with his wiry beard, faded fatigues, and six-inch cigars. The man who would lead the small Caribbean island to communism was educated by Jesuit priests and earned his law degree at the University of Havana. Castro launched his first and failed revolution in 1953, where 30 of his followers were killed while attacking the Moncada barracks. 
Castro was imprisoned, then deported, but made his way back on an overloaded powerboat. After nearly a decade of coups, riots, and political rebellion, the people despaired of the government of Fulgencio Batista. He stepped down, left the country, and Castro seized power on January 1, 1959. He held on for nearly 50 years. The most significant U.S. response to Castro's communist regime came in 1961, when President John F. Kennedy backed the failed Bay of Pigs invasion, where hundreds of Cuban exile fighters were captured and sent to prison or killed. The next year, American spy planes discovered secret Soviet missiles inside Cuba. After a 13-day U.S. naval blockade, the Soviet Union backed down and removed the missiles. Castro was enraged as the world watched two superpowers walk away from a nuclear nightmare. In 1980, Castro unleashed an unprecedented human wave of more than 125,000 Cubans on America. Mixed in with political prisoners were criminals, murderers, rapists, and the insane. The Mariel boat lift forever changed South Florida's landscape. Fourteen years later, as Cuba's economy collapsed further, Castro unleashed a second wave of human cargo. This time, whether America wanted them or not, 30,000 Cubans were coming to her shores again. In 1998, Cuba opened its island doors to Pope John Paul II. The Holy Father and the man who chained down Cuba's churches shared words before the world. Critics would later call the historic meeting little more than a public relations campaign. In the summer of 2006, Castro underwent surgery for intestinal bleeding and quietly ceded power to his younger brother, Raul. In February 2008, Castro announced he would no longer serve as Cuba's president and commander-in-chief. A surprising move few thought they would live to see. By the end of the month, the country's National Assembly formally elected Raul to succeed his brother, Fidel. Though often referred to as a tyrannical dictator, millions on the impoverished island considered Castro the charismatic leader who brought education and medicine to the masses. But to America's Cuban exiles, he was forever hated, responsible for Cuba's economic ruin.